Hey, bye, Tom's here, and today we're cutting up a little shorty here. This is a piece of red elm. Uh, the length on this is about four and a half feet or so. It's not really that big. Um, the way I have it oriented, uh, oriented, excuse me, 16 inches, and then height, about 18 inches. So it's not a small log by any stretch of the imagination. And the size that it is, the diameter, and the reason I have it cut in this way, I've got a check or end grain split right here that's pretty much in this direction. So I want to cut in that direction and hopefully I'm going to split the pith there and we'll see if we get anything out of that. I love the way that red elm smells. It's one of my favorite woods. I've only cut it, I think uh, this might be my second or third time cutting. I haven't cut it very often, but it's a very, very good smelling wood in my opinion. But we're going to go ahead and cut this up into pretty thick stuff. I've read a lot of stuff about red elm. They say that it moves a whole lot. Now, previously when I've cut red elm, I've cut it at two inches thick, and I've had no movement. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing here, too. We're going to be cutting our top cut here, which is our reference cut. We'll go ahead and cut off somewhere in probably this region right here. We'll flip it 180 over. I'll do another cut, getting on the, on the two-inch scale. And I might do one or two cuts here and then flip the side back over. Yeah, flip the side back. So I'll, I'll cut here and then turn it over, cut two off of this side or maybe one off this side, we'll see. And I wanna make sure I have enough sitting on my bunks here and not having to use my log stops on the side. Sorry, I had to think about it because I was flipping it in my head. But uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead again, cut in this direction on the on the aft end of the log. It's about the same, exact same kind of check we have there. And we'll see what she has to uh, to go with. Now I have warmed up the sawmill, so no issue there. Just tighten up the blade. We'll apply some water and we'll do our first cut. Kind of see what she looks like. Also, what I have to do today, you can't really see it, but on the other side of the sawmill, I've got a sawdust pile that is insanely big. I gotta clean that up.
and turn the mill off so you can hear me talk and I don't have to scream too loud. But yeah, once you start getting into that, that heartwood, you can really smell that, you know, very good smell. Now this looks very pretty. Uh, that's actually ripping out just a little bit there because the, the exterior of that wood started to deteriorate just a little bit. Now I did hear a weird sound and I was hoping it was not a nail. It appears there's no nail, which is good. It might have been a small little rock or something like that in the uh, outside of the wood. Man, that just smells... I like the smell of elm. And this is a pretty slab. Now, I don't have any water to throw in this right now, but we'll throw some on the end. That's a very pretty slab. And I think this would be a very beautiful bench. The bark's starting to come off, which actually, I don't like to even work with bark on anything. I like to take all the bark off, uh, actually, even before I start drying the wood. And I think it's, it's really easy to fix up uh, you can use a little draw knife to take off some of the sharp edges and then take your sander, orbital sander, and go to it. But that would be a pretty, pretty bench. And that's a that's a stout bench, too, at two inches thick. So we're going to go ahead and cut up the rest of this at two inches thick, and we'll see what else this tree has to offer. And I'm just removing this bark here just because I didn't want it to come off. Oh, and that's the other thing. i got to flip this log over. We talked about that. I almost went back to the sawmill, or the, the head there, and didn't flip it over. That would have been pretty silly. And this log did have some firings on it, too. That's, that's uh, the joys of southern Mississippi. Firings are everywhere. Oh, and also, the joys of Mississippi, we were just seeing today, you know, it hasn't been a year, a summer, without a hurricane, and we may have a hurricane coming. So, that's all, that's all fun and games. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we'll see how this, this storm plays out. Last year was a rough year for us with uh, Sally, Zeta, and Beta, and Gamma, whatever. I don't know, whatever storms we had. We had quite a few. This year, though, we've been pretty fortunate to have had very many. But um, it looks like uh, Lady Luck is kind of catching up with us. Because we are potentially going to get some storms early next week. So we'll see. All right. I'm talking too much. Let's go ahead and cut this up. Two inch scale. I don't have to change anything because we already were there. Actually, I take the back. I am going to go ahead and set my return a little bit closer so my head doesn't have to go all the way up. But we'll slide this up real quick. This is a one shot wonder. We'll get this video shot in no time.
didn't take any time at all. We were just going through this quite easily. Now, one of the things I'm going to be doing here soon is I'm going to be doing a video on some best practices around a sawmill. As you can see, there are some things I do almost every single time when I'm done cutting. Always bring your log stops up, bring your log dog back and down, all sorts of stuff like that. You want to make sure you get everything out of the way, and then whenever you're ready to load the next log on there, then you have your log stops that'll stop. You're not hitting your log turner. There's all sorts of things. Also make sure I use tow boards. I don't like to load logs on the tow boards, but it's it's best if you can put the tow boards down too. I just don't think it's good to load on a load onto a, a tow board if you just drop it onto there. But I, I'm working on a video on that. Also, it'll be out hopefully in the next two weeks or so. I'm working on a video with a carbide tip tooth blade. And let me tell you folks, it's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a good one. And it is this will be like a multi-part series because we've already run the blade once. And I just sharpened it with Mr. Robert here recently. And then we're going to run the blade to failure. We'll see how long because the cost of a carbide tip tooth blade is quite a bit more than that of a standard blade. But I'm trying to show, does it have the lifespan? Is it worth, you know, however many more times what it's cost? Will it last that much longer? Will it cut that much better? And I think you'll be pretty impressed because I am pretty impressed. But that's another video. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cut away and I will do some water on these slabs right here and we'll see what it looks like because I think oh yeah I wish you could smell it too but it's good it's real good <laughs> all right so here we go red elm two inches thick very beautiful stuff That is pretty. And again, I'm going to be making these into benches. And it, maybe a larger one could be a coffee table, but most likely I'm just going to make these into benches. In fact, I need a bench for my back porch because we are working on converting the back porch into a sunroom. Nearly done. It's looking really great. Um, one of these might work for that. About the right size. I like the colors, the smell. I tell y'all folks, the smell is really what's the most amazing thing there. And the stuff that I have that's been drying in my shop for, I don't know, six months or more, it just makes the shop smell amazing. So, hope this is interesting. It's just a quick little video. And see, I had probably, there was a little bit of set out in my blade, but still nothing that a planer can't fix. I'll run this over to my buddy Jack. We'll use a 725 planer because my 718 planer is up with my dad up in Tennessee, but I'm very happy with these. I think whoever, if, if somebody wants a bench out of these, I think they'll be pretty happy with these too. So we'll see. Um, again, please like, subscribe. Also, one of the things of new is my dad did finally get his new sawmill, the Timber King 2220. So that means officially as of today, this is the August 26th date um, that we are, we just posted the sawmill. I quickly posted it on one website, but long story short, we posted it again. We've got uh, uh, just a few days that we're hoping to get the thing sold because there's another purchase we're trying to do. So we'll see. All right, we'll see you around folks and have a good one. Thanks, bye.